This is episode number 454 of the Health and Fitness Podcast with Rob Dion. Big shout out to our show sponsors, Smith Street Paleo. Don't forget, if you want to get on a meal plan, drop them an email. Hello at smithstreetpaleo.com. Maybe weekly, monthly, fortnightly, daily, business style, all types. Get involved. Go check them out. www.smithstreetpaleo.com. Welcome back to another edition of the show, folks. And I think one thing that's absolutely awesome about the world of podcasting as it is evolving is that there's people all around the world doing it. And I'm absolutely stoked to have on the show today the host of the Open Sky Fitness Podcast, Rob Dion from LA. Rob, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us. Marcus, thank you so much for having me on your show, man. This is I'm super excited. Awesome. Mate, listen, I think the best way to kick it off, I have a bio on you that reads really sexy and I could sort of punch that out. But what I'm gonna do, <laughs> mate, I'm gonna put it all over to you. Give us a background, mate. You're over there in LA. Tell us tell us what you do and also I think what's important, mate, why you do it. Yeah, well, you know, in LA right now, I'm a personal trainer. Uh, I also, as you mentioned, I have the Open Sky Fitness Podcast. My wife and I are building an online community uh, that we're really excited about. And, it, you know, just like I think anybody that does have a passion around health, they're not trying to help people just lose weight or just get huge. They're they're helping people actually change their lives. Yeah. Uh, so that's the thing that we're really passionate about is helping people really transition into a way of living that is sustainable from now until, you know, until the the, the last breath, right? Yeah. So that's that's the thing that we're most passionate about. And the way that I got into it was kind of, ba- I backdoored my way into it in that uh, I originally moved to Los Angeles to become an actor. And this, uh, this world is full of a lot of uh, aesthetic, you have to be aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. Um, so I ended up booking a play. And I had to take my shirt off in the play. So I had a background in being, you know, in being uh, fit because I was an athlete. I grew up an athlete. Uh, but for my 20s, basically for my 20s into my into my early 30s, uh, the only way that I knew how to be fit fit and healthy was to just work out really hard and starve myself. <laughs> and, and and I think a lot of people that's what they think, you know, cuz yeah. there's there's that there's that saying that you know, just move more, eat less, yeah. right? And I definitely applied that whenever I wanted to lose weight. And I ended up getting uh getting booked into uh some it was a play called Troy Listen and Crescent that I had to take my shirt off. And uh one of the one of the guys that I was playing against was he he was overweight. And he had to take his shirt off as well. And he asked me if I would be interested in training him. And I, you know, it's interesting because I was 28 at the time. And I just, you know, I I told him, I was like, look, man, I've never trained anybody before. Or uh, I've trained friends in the past. I've always been the guy that people would work out with, but I, I I've never trained anybody. And I was like, I'll pay you. I was like, okay, you know, it's like, <laughs> I'll, I'll take I'll take it I'll, I'll take the job. I need I needed the money. I was an out of, I was basically an out of work actor. Right. And uh, so I trained this guy, and I was teaching him what I knew, which wasn't all that much. But over the course of a year, he ended up losing about a hundred pounds. And while he was losing a hundred pounds, I was gaining all my weight back. Like I had lost the weight for that show, and then I was just getting fatter. And so he was looking better and I was looking worse because what I was teaching him wasn't necessarily sustainable. And so by the time I got married at 30 or 31 when I got married, um, I was about 30 pounds heavier than I had ever been in my life. And I, my wife had taken a picture of me standing in a waterfall on our honeymoon in Hawaii and she was just, I had no idea she was going to do this. She calls, she's like, hey, Rob. And I turn around and she snaps this picture and it's just me with my gut hanging out. <laughs> and I was, I was mortified that this is the way that I now look at like 31 years, at 31 years old. And she, um, you know, she thought I looked good because that's what wives say. But, uh, <laughs> but I was disgusted with myself and I realized that the way that I was approaching health was completely wrong. The way that I was approaching my nutrition was completely wrong. And now it's taken me over the last 10 years of, of, uh, you know, personal searching and also searching with my clients because I built an, I built a business around being a fitness trainer and, a, and a, you know, and a nutrition coach and everything, yeah. um, to really find a new way to do this that's sustainable. That doesn't mean that, I have to diet down and then gain the weight back, diet down and gain the weight back. Is that, so, what, is that what you were doing, mate? You said you were doing everything wrong. Like, let, let's jump into some of those lessons and share them with people straight away. Yeah. Like, what were you doing? What did you identify at that point that you were doing wrong? 
Well, I did. I did what everybody does. First, I started with detoxes. I started doing cleanses. I became pescatarian. Um, I was doing the low cal. I was doing a low calorie diet. I was trying, you know, the Mediterranean. I was trying just the, all the diet programs that are out there. And I just and it, none of it ever stuck because I wasn't trying to change the way that I was eating it, overall. I was just trying to see a number on the scale change. Right. And I think that's where most people go wrong when they go on a diet. They're trying to change the number on the scale. They're not trying to change their life. Yeah. And if you're if you're chasing the number, you are going to lose every time. <laughs> that number that number is gonna it's good because you know this because you guys do you guys do CrossFit, you guys do heavy lifting. People are putting on muscle mass. Yeah. People are getting stronger and their and their bodies are getting um, becoming more and more efficient. When you do that, you end up, you know, sometimes people gain weight. Or they hold plateaus, but they are still getting stronger. They're still seeing progress in other areas. They might not see the progress on the scale at the same time. Yeah. So this is where people get hung up on that number, and that will completely sabotage them mentally, and they cannot – they just lose all their momentum, yeah. and they fall off. And and the next thing they know, they're they're out of the game for about a year or so. They gain a bunch of weight, and then they try to do something similar a year or so later that's as just as intense – but doesn't necessarily, again, address the real issues of why am I eating this way? Why am I so, you know, hung up on the number? And, you know, and how do I just transition this into a, into a type of lifestyle? But is that, 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 is that because that is, that's the easiest thing, mate? They can latch onto that number as a target and it's like, okay, I've got a target now. I can work towards it. Or yeah. like, what, is it something deeper or what's, what's your thoughts? I think it's always something deeper. Right. So I, I've worked with clients that are over 300 pounds and, you know, they have that number under 300. Anything under 299 is healthy. Yeah. And and that is immediately you're setting yourself for fail, setting yourself up for failure there. If you're if you if you believe that any weight than your current weight is healthy, uh, you're you're not going to succeed. Right. You have to believe that that you are healthy right here in this moment. And, and I don't mean like, oh, I believe it and I'm going to start shoving bonbons down my throat. <laughs> I mean like I mean like you have to believe that, okay, I'm, I'm choosing a lifestyle, right? And you guys are into – you guys are into paleo. Yeah. My wife and I are very much into paleo as well. Awesome. We don't think paleo is exactly is, – is the, is the exact diet for everyone. Correct. But we think yeah. a paleo-based diet is a very good place to start. Yeah. Um, so for a lot of people, if they're trying to – if they want to be healthy and they want to be, you know, and they're chasing the number, like I said, they're going to fail. But if they if they choose to eat a specific way that is healthy, that gives them good energy, it, it cures any kind of gut inflammation they might be having, um, you know, digestive issues, skin allergies, whatever it is, and they get themselves into a way of eating that 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 basically alleviates all of those symptoms. But maybe the scale is not moving down. Mm -hmm. Well, then maybe it's something to deal with on the emotional level, but at the same time, they have to be okay with, okay, I'm eating really healthy. I'm, I'm doing something physical, right? I don't want to say you have to do CrossFit or you have to lift heavy weights, sure. but if you're doing something physical every single day, uh, and you're, and you're basically taking care of yourself in a way that is, um, that is proactive, then you have to be okay with that. Mm. And once you're okay with that, I tr trust me, the weight starts coming off. Yeah. It just might not come off the, the in the time frame that you want it to, and the way in which in the places in, on your body that you want it to, yeah. and that's where we get that's where we get hung up. So we have to be okay with just being healthy and not just losing weight. This is and this is and we're guilty of this. Mm. You and me are guilty of this because in order to sell as a entrepreneur who's somebody who's trying to you know make their way in the health business, you have to speak in certain terms that that talk to someone's insecurities that talk to their their you know their fears around yeah. themselves yeah. and we have to say words like if you're looking to lose weight if you're looking to tone up we have to speak in those <laughs> words but unfortunately it's you know we know that that's bullshit yeah but that's the way that the the health industry is sort of like the health industry made that term tone up. You, you, you go back 20 years, like, and you, you walk into a gym and you say tone up to Arnie, you know, it, no one understands what tone up means, but it's sort of, right. it, it comes on trend. And, and that's, that's maybe where we, we could move to a little bit here, Rob, is that we're moving with what 
is the status quo and what the general population are accepting as terms. It's like, you know, yeah. what the health gets released, everyone goes vegan. You know, Tone Up comes in, Jane Fonda was in, everyone should do Jane Fonda. Like, the, the yeah. way that the industry moves is quite, like, it's, it's making a massive impact on people that don't have the knowledge, isn't it? Yeah. Well, look, we, there's always going to be fads, right? We have right now it's ketogenic. It's intermittent (laughs) fasting. Um, you know, the, the, you know, a few years ago, like you said, Jane Fonda was high, high reps, low weight. Um, we're always, we're always jumping on some kind of bandwagon because everybody wants the fast track. Everybody wants the magic pill. How do I fix my life? Because it sucks right now. And how do I change it very quickly? So this way I get to the place that I really want to be. And the thing is, is that there is no fast track. There's just there is just transitioning. Uh, we talk about quite a bit on our show. My wife and I go to therapy. Um, she's been going to therapy way longer than me. Um, but we, you have to change your mind. And mm. you talk about this too. I've heard you talk about this. Yeah. Where it's not, you know, you can you can put in put in all these different strategies, but unless you change your mind frame around it, uh, you are not going to succeed. And I think that's the difference between somebody who's you know a high achiever, very successful, is that they realize that their mind is their only limitation. Mm. And once they can, once they change the way that they think about something, and whether or not they can or can't, um, one of the, they've made that decision already. Uh, that is their only limiting factor. How do you as a coach get people to change their mind, mate? I don't want you to give us all of your secrets, yeah. but what's your, you know, what are, what are the things that you're doing with your clients and with the people that you come into contact with to get to flick that switch almost in the mindset? Well, one of the things you have to do as a coach, right? And this is, a, I think this is a really important lesson for a lot of coaches, young yeah. coaches out there. You have to get your, your clients have to believe in you 100%, mm-hmm. right? Because there's a certain amount of accountability that comes with being a coach. If you're a coach and you're lackadaisical, you show up late, you uh, you don't practice what you preach, uh, you just have you know your clients are running you, you're not running your clients. They're gonna walk all over you. They're not gonna listen to you. So yeah. you have to basically run the show. So this way they know that you are the leader. If right. they don't feel like you're the leader, you're you're all lost, yeah. right? So, and th- that we, that we instill in our online stuff and that we instill also in our one-on-one coaching. But, uh, what really sets it apart is you have to be able to, so once they trust you, then it is now your job to teach them what, what does work. Mm. And throughout the process, if they have a, maybe a fixed mindset or maybe a, a you know, uh, they're maybe more of a perfectionist, they're going to run into some roadblocks. So let's say, and, and let's use let's use like you know very standard lifting exercises like squats and deadlifts. Yeah. People, these, these are the, the fundamental movements that you need to learn how to do because everything is usually based off of that. Whether or not you're doing some power movements, uh, you know, explosive movements on the field, whatever, it all basically starts to stem from squats and deadlifts. That's where your power comes from. Sure. Uh, if you do not have these fundamental movements down, you basically you're starting off with a very very shoddy foundation of a, you know, as an athlete, right? Mm. Ultimately, we're all training to be somewhat of an athlete in our own personal lives. Yeah. So one of the things I, I start with is I start with, I start with those movements with my clients. We have to learn these basic fundamentals. And the great thing is, is that for most people, as long as they stay, as long as they stay on track, they start to see the progress very quickly. And once they see, see the progress very quickly, they, they, they start to buy in. Yeah. Right. You cannot. I had a guy on my show, BJ Gador, who you should interview and I'll make an introduction if you're interested. <laughs> yeah, for he, used sure. to be, he used to be the fitness director over at uh, Men's Health. Great okay. guy. And he said, you know, we, we had this conversation about how do you how do you help someone get motivated? Yeah. And he said, because people ask me all the time, they say, you know, how, why are you so motivated? How are you so motivated? How, how can I get motivated? And unfortunately, if you ask, ask that question, you're kind of dead in the water. Right. Because the motivation cannot come from the outside. It has to come from within. And you know this because I know that you're a high achiever. Yeah. I see all the things that you're doing. Yeah. You're running a CrossFit studio. You have your successful podcast. You have your online presence. Yeah. You guys are churning out all kinds of stuff. And nobody's telling you to do that. Yeah. You're, it's, it's coming from within you going, I need to give more. Yeah. I need to, I need to provide this for people because they need it. And, and there's this inner drive in you to do so. And not only are you doing that, 
you look freaking phenomenal. So you are also <laughs> provi- you are also working out on a consistent basis, yeah. and you you know that you ha- that's something that comes from within you to do that. Yeah. Now, if somebody's listening, they're like, "Oh my god, I feel so de- deplete, like defeated because I don't have that inner drive." It comes. You just have to start. One of the things that you have to start doing, if you don't have that, is you start. You need to start taking little baby steps, and you need to start outsourcing. Yeah. So hiring somebody like you yeah. is a great. Pot is a great way to outsource. If you have no passion around working out, go and work out with somebody who's passionate about working out yeah. and that will start rubbing off on you yeah. and then start just implementing small little things. And we, we have habits. We have these four fundamental habits that we uh, instill in all of our clients and all of the, our, our, you know, all of our, our, you know, online uh, group. Yeah. And that is the, the habits. And I'll, and I'll give you these, these little habits. One is on a daily basis, Every single day, you have eighty to one hundred ounces of water, right? That's it. Right. Just make that a habit. And <laughs> and will you, are you perfect? Will you hit it every day? No. But just make that part of the things that you're striving for to get better at. Eating eight, drinking eighty to one hundred ounces of water at minimum a day. Uh, eating two to three vegetables, green leafy green vegetables, not necessarily potatoes or uh, or some kind of like corn on the cob or something. It doesn't count. If it, right. It's got to be leafy green in in in, in its core. Um, and then uh, working out or doing something physical at least 20 minutes a day, right? And we span this out. So if you're if you're a competitive athlete, you probably don't deal with this because you're working out already a couple hours every day. Yeah. But if sure. you're just somebody trying to get the ball rolling. Getting into the habit of doing something physical 20 minutes a day is a really good place to start, and it can be all you need if you if you don't have any big major fitness goals. Yeah. It could be all you need. And then the last one is uh, the elimination of processed food and sugar and added sugar. <laughs> and that one kind of that seems like two, but it's basically lumped into one because it's what most of us fuel our bodies on for most of the part of the day you know whether it's our whether or not we're stopping at starbucks and we're drinking a frappuccino or we're eating some kind of processed food because we don't have time we, we're so busy that yeah. we don't have the time to cook something healthy right so it's it's, it's those four things are incredible like people will be listening and thinking are these guys for real like we're in a world mm-hmm. where you've mentioned it you know ketosis is huge at the moment last year was the year of vegan who knows what's coming next right. and a guy like you who's you know you're working with the great people you've set up a successful business everything's going the right way robs four key things everyone's going but that's so simple like mm-hmm. it's the simplest things right why are we yeah. not able to activate them though why are people not able to do it Did I lose you? Uh, no, we're still. I, I think we, we. Yeah, I can hear you. Are you still there? Yeah, I hear you again. You said, "Why are we not able?" And then yeah, I missed the rest of that. Why are we not able to follow those four simple things? Well, we overcomplicate things. Right. This is you were. I was. I was listening to you in a video. You were talking about you know when you're working at that Fortune 500 company and you yeah. were literally sitting down with a piece of paper and writing down the things that were important to you. And it doesn't take more than just a piece of paper. Yes. And it doesn't take more than just a few things done on a daily basis with consistency to have the biggest impact on your life. But the thing is, is that we're so we're overthinking this because there's so many people in the fitness world trying to sell us on all kinds of crazy shit that does not matter. Yes. It doesn't matter. It's I like love it. if you, right? It's, yeah. it's 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 insane. Why are we buying all these DVD systems and why are we getting all these complicated diets? Like I know that I look, I know that um you know, applying a certain uh calorie count on a daily basis with a certain amount of working out and and really uh structuring your macronutrients is going to that is going to give you significant results, physical results. You're going to see For that, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. We know this. But why do that if you're an, if you're anything less than a like than an ath- than a, an athlete? Yeah. Why do this if you're if you're not unless you are literally trying to compete at something? Yeah. Because you can get very very close to that, and this is where we all get sucked up into being perfect. But like, you can get <laughs> very very close to that if you just ate whole foods, stayed away from processed foods and sugars, consistently drank enough water, moved and and worked out on a daily basis. You can structure that to take you closer to your goal based on how you're structuring those workouts and also, you know, you know, and and also drinking your water. I don't know if I said that one already. There's the water, the vegetables, the workouts and the processed sugar. That's all it takes. And it's 
And it's really people are like, uh, no, not strong enough, Rob. It's not in, it's not sexy enough. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> not, not though. But that's the it. thing, though, mate. It's not sexy, yeah. is it? It doesn't come yeah. in a nice packaging. It doesn't, you know, it's yep. not sexy and it's not complex and and yep. and and that's the thing. It's so simple, but we just don't yeah. seem to be able to, you know. Talking about people following things, mate, this is one of the, the, the biggest, I mean, we've been looking at it as, as a group of coaches here for a long time. We actually, we had a chat the other day. We we're like, okay, so everyone's come in with it. People come in with a new program, the strength program or, or whatever it is, or a new diet. It's eight weeks, it's 12 weeks. We stick to mm-hmm. it for two weeks. Like the average time <laughs> that I'm seeing people stick yeah. to something is like, you can go and count your calories. You'll do it for two weeks and then you'll get yeah. jack of of putting it every day in my fitness pal or weighing it on the scales and stuff like that. So I agree with you totally, mate. The, we, we're just completely overcomplicating things. And when we yeah. overcomplicate it so much, we get confused ourselves and we're like, well, what actually happens if I have an extra 50 grams of chicken or an extra something of, of carbohydrate today? And then we just lose everything, don't we? So it's, it, it is that overcomplication that's, that's almost crushing us. Yeah. And you, you and I are a little bit guilty of this because if I scroll <laughs> through your Rolodex of, of podcast episodes, yeah. you're giving so much information away, yes. right? Yes. And, and we are, um, we are, we're almost pitch, we're almost giving information for people that are, that are, um, obsessed fitness enthusiasts. That's yeah. the amount of information we provide. That unfortunately, in order to stay current, in order to, uh, cons- consistently churn out content, we need to find, if I literally every episode was, okay, guys, we're only going to do these four things today, every <laughs> single episode, people would be like, I'm done. I'm done yeah. listening. Yeah. Um, but you know, so I do podcast episodes about you know mental clarity. I do podcast episodes about organizational life. I do podcast episodes about macronutrients and yeah. calories and and everything. I do podcasts about all of it. Um, if you're just dumbing it down to what do I need to do to be healthy, lose weight, uh, feel physically strong and mentally clear and have a great digestive system, those four habits is all you need. Yeah. It's literally those things. And I know that that's hard. Yeah. You know, for a lot of people, it's really, it's actually, it's not, it is hard because, and then there's the conversation about generational eating. You know, we have our emotional baggage. We, you know, I don't, I don't know about you, but I definitely struggle with food because I grew up in a family where I had four older sisters. The way that we looked was very, very important. Um, and they, uh, they dieted on a consistent basis. My mom started the whole trend, but everybody was dieting whenever they didn't like the way they, they looked. And that is, that is, you know, it, it just, you know, mentally, yeah. When we don't feel confident about ourselves, you have to do something about it instead of instead of just changing the way that you life you 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 live your life or trying to maybe potentially change your mindset around things. And that's the harder that's the harder nut to crack. Yeah. So for sure. I think that for a lot of people they get in their own way. And one of the things to do to get out of your own way, if you are somewhat of a perfectionist, which I think we all kind of fall into that category a little bit, yeah. is to take it slow. You do not have to be perfect. You just have to start implementing little things here, you know, every single day. And if you can commit to just drinking 80 to 100 ounces of water every single day for a month, that's not that big of an ask. No. Right? No. That's not that big of a, a challenge. It's like, oh, I literally have to fill a water bottle and do that. And if you're not doing that, then you really do need to do some introspective work and figure out why are you sabotaging yourself. Yeah. Because if it literally just takes creating that habit and then adding one more and then adding one more and you're not doing it, I, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, like it's, it's hard to then, it's hard to then, then you need to, then you need to either do some internal work or talk to a therapist about why you're sabotaging yourself Absolutely. because it really is that simple. Yeah, agreed. Mate, let's jump into your podcast. You have a, 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 a huge podcast, over 200 shows. For the folks that are listening, Open Sky Fitness Podcast, go and look it. I actually, mate, I'm going to tell you, I'm stealing an idea from you. I loved it. The throwback Thursdays on your podcast. I was speaking yes. to the guys at the gym the other day. I was like, we've had so many good guests and I don't know how to get them back out again. And I've started listening to this one guy's podcast, Rob, on Open Sky Fitness, and he does a throwback on a podcast. So folks, get ready for that. All the good guests, we're going to start throwing back. But mate, tell us a little bit about your podcast why you started it like what's the motivation behind that and what you're doing with it 
Yeah, I mean, I think as a uh, as a you know an entrepreneur, as a person who originally tur- starts turning out content, uh, I I didn't want to do a podcast. Actually, in fact, I, I back in two thirds two thousand thirteen when we started, I didn't even know what a podcast was. Wow. Uh, I wanted to start a YouTube channel, and one of my friends is a you know he works in film, he works in television, he was actually uh, producing on the TV show How I Met Your Mother. And I contacted him and said, hey, man, would you want to produce my YouTube channel? We'll do all kinds of fitness advice, workout videos, all, all that stuff. And he goes, look, man, I'm producing the uh, How I Met Your Mother podcast, and I have all the equipment. You can come to the studio at Fox Studios, and we can start – we can record We can record there, and um, let's come up with a present, uh, like a, some kind of uh, you know idea around what a show would look like. Yeah. And, I, at, at first, and I was like, okay, well, I, I don't know what a podcast is, so I'm going to have to do some research. And I started listening <laughs> to people like – Ben Greenfield and Rob Wolf and I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is like this is like untapped resource. You're getting to hear yeah. some of the best thinkers in the world talk about what they are doing to see results, what yeah. they are doing in their businesses, what they're doing with their clients. And it was like it was it was amazing. And I was like, okay. So we started this podcast. I I, I had my my best friend Jeff Meacham was my co-host at the time. This is like now we're going back, and my buddy Alec was the producer. And we basically created a car talk or love lines for fitness right. and where people would call in. They would ask us questions and we would – and this is because we only had a mindset around radio. We didn't realize what podcasting truly was. Um, and I would have people call in and they would ask ask questions. I would be like Dr. Drew and my buddy Jeff. He's, he's funny. He's really funny. Right. Uh, he would be Adam Carolla. And um, we did that for maybe five or six episodes and then we realized – to get like three or four people to call in at the exact time that the four, the three of us are sitting in a room <laughs> is so logistically complicated. You know this because yeah. last week or a couple of weeks ago, I totally stood you up <laughs> and it was because it's six o'clock in the morning in Los Angeles and it's five o'clock in the afternoon, in the evening in Dubai. Yeah. And I just, I, I overslept and I completely <laughs> fucked it up. And so, <laughs> so, but like that's what people do all the time. Yeah. So we had to change our format and, uh, and eventually we transitioned to just interviewing. Right. And then I realized, uh, you know, that was really fun because, you know, interviewing is a great way to connect with people. Yeah. Um, but also it's a great way to not have to provide all of the content because just like you're, you're, all you have to do is ask me questions and I'll give you all the content you need. Yeah. That's a great strategy for, you know, for helping, uh, provide information for your audience. Yeah. And then, uh, what I realized was I was, I was no longer positioning myself as the authority on my show. And so now every other week you, you, we have my wife and I, who she's a holistic nutrition counselor uh, and a gyrotonic instructor uh, in Los Angeles. Right. And so what we do is every other week we do a podcast, just the two of us, where we cover very specific topics, sometimes Q and A's from our uh, from our podcast community on Facebook. And that is that is how we organize our show. And then the other week we have a, an interview. Yeah. Uh, someone like yourself or anybody else in the in the fitness world or the I mean I've had uh, David um, David Allen on my show who is does um, uh, the getting things done he's you know I, like high level organizational people business people because it really is about organizing your life in a way that's structured for you that's the most efficient for you yeah. uh, so that's our that's how we organize our show and then yes awesome. we started doing a throwback Thursday to revisit some of the great episodes because people are just starting to listen. And they just started tuning in, and it's like we what we do is we cherry pick out the, the our favorites from the past, our you know some of our highest download podcast episodes yeah. from the past. Such sure, a pop great away. idea, and honestly, yeah. we, mate. I, I'm I'm telling you on the show. I'm telling all the listeners on our show. We're gonna start. We, I've stolen that idea from you. Sorry, uh, <laughs> because that's <laughs> no, the thing. Like, it's it's it, it's funny you mentioned. You know, back in the day when you sort of started listening. Like we've had Ben Greenfield on our show. I think three yeah. times. He's he's a, he's a friend of mine. He's he's actually been over here to Dubai a couple of times as well. You know, we we've had Jason Kalipa on the show. We've had so many good shows, but the people that are sort of just moving into listening to podcasts now have missed all the good stuff, you know, or, or, yeah. or all the, not all the good stuff because we're still, obviously this is a great show as well. You know, we, we, we not every show is a great show though, as you, as you will, uh, as, they can't all be. as someone, someone actually came up to me in the, in, in the gym yesterday he goes, mate, that show you did the other day, that guest was an idiot. And I was like, Oh, Oh, okay. Sorry. But we, oh. won't, we won't mention, we won't mention that, but it is, mate, it's a, it, it, it's a great, uh, it is a great 
avenues to get stuff out. Another thing I want to jump into, mate, is your, your, your website. And one thing that I noticed over there on your website is it, it, it calls out. It's great. Unlock the secrets to burn fat after 35. Mate, talk to us about that because this is a question that I think will resonate with a lot of people. We get asked it a lot and something does start to happen in people's minds when they're over 35 to 40 that makes them think that they can't lose weight. So what's, what's happening over on your site and what is that all about? Well, I think that the thing that a lot of people, when they hit 35, it's like, I'm an adult. It's almost like you <laughs> change, you, you know, you know what I'm saying? Because under, you know, now they say 30 is like the new 20, but when you hit 35, it's like, it's all of a sudden you've jumped into adulthood. You have to, as a woman, you need to be like, oh shit, I only got about five more years before I need to pop out some kids. Otherwise yeah. I'm not having a family, yeah. you know, uh, men start thinking the same way in that. If I – like they start looking at themselves in the mirror like, oh my god, if I'm 35 and I look like this, yeah. let's flash forward another 15 years at 50. I'm going to look – I'm going to be twice the size. And so Terrible. we start really uh, – this is I think when we start seeing – um, uh, a little clearer what the path is going to look like for the next 10, 15 years. Yeah. And unless we make the decision at this moment to start changing the path and blazing a new trail, uh, we are going to be in this for good. Yeah. Um, and be, and we all know, you know, this as well as I do. If you, the, as you wait for something, the longer you wait, the harder it is to get started. 100%. So at 35, I feel like that is the real time where most people are, they're in the mindset, I have to make a change. How do I make a change? And obviously, you know, we talk about burning fat, but we've kind of covered that. It's, it has to be eye catching. It has to be something that people are at. What is their pain point? Right. For a lot of people, they look at their gut. They look at that tie around their waist or they, they look at the fat on their hips or behind their arms and they go, they just like go, oh, like I'm not happy with who I am. I know this is I know I need to burn fat. Most people are scared to build muscle mass, unfortunately, which I hope that you and I are kind of changing that trend. People yeah. like us are saying, no, the more muscle you have, the better off you're going to be. Yeah. But this is basically the through line of what Open Sky Fitness is. It's really teaching people how to burn fat on a regular basis by living a specific lifestyle that really does promote that, that one that one major thing that you're really striving for. But sometimes we have to wrap the the the, uh, the medicine in bologna in order for pe people to really get it, yeah. right? Uh, the, the medicine being, you know, you have to, you, you need a healthy lifestyle. Uh, the bologna being, you want to burn fat now? You can. Yeah. Uh, and that is, that is just the reality of the fitness world. But, you know, we've put together actually some really great things, which I haven't even added to my website yet, which actually should be on the, fr on the front page there. Right. Um, we put together like this paleo reset it's a seven day paleo reset yeah which basically i saw that people on eating. your instagram that looks awesome yeah right and getting people to eat clean for seven days has had amazing impacts on people where i mean it's not going to be fat but people have lost 10 pounds in seven days from Brilliant. just changing their just changing what they're eating they're not starving themselves as you know paleo is not about starving or low right. calorie it's about eating whole foods and when you tra transition from eating a processed food high sugar diet to a more of a paleo strict paleo diet for seven days yeah. uh the inflammation the gut inflammation goes down you shed a whole bunch of water weight that's just your body's just holding on to because you're eating so much processed food and processed sugars and salts uh, and you're just you just feel your energy levels just spike up. So people are losing 10 pounds in, you know, in their first week. Uh, obviously, it goes it, it, it slows down after that. Otherwise, it would not be healthy. But the you know, this is this is the thing that we're like most passionate about right now. And that is the the paleo reset. The seven day paleo reset well, is basically it. the underlying um, thought process behind the SkyFit Challenge thing that we do, which is the group training that we're, we have online, and that's, that's all awesome. community based. If that's there was a cool. fourth pillar, if there was like a fourth, like a fifth pillar, right? If we had that, all those four habits was the four was four pillars. There's a fifth pillar which is community, yeah. and CrossFit's really great at creating community. Yeah. You guys are really from watching what you do and seeing what your online presence is like, and your 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 Instagram, your social media, yeah. uh, and, and just you know having having a, a gym. Is such an amazing way to create a strong community, but we do that online. Wow. So we build a community online of people that are, I would say like 95% are over 35 and then up to probably, I think the oldest person we have in our 
you know, they're following a very paleo based diet that is transitioning in, into their, uh, into a healthier lifestyle for them. And that's again, we follow those four pillars of health and amazing. it's just, that's how you make the biggest impact on people. So that's where you're, that's what you're seeing on the pod on, on our website. On the it's website. Like, yeah. This is the most important thing for us is really trying to help people transition into that lifestyle and burning fat after 35 is, I think just that's, that's like the effect of a healthy lifestyle. Mate, I think uh, I, I think we can we can cross promote it really easily there. And that if if people hop over and get your uh, get your seven days paleo reset, then they'll definitely come back to us and and jump into Smith Street Paleo and, and hop onto a meal plan with us. So you've really promoted paleo quite well for us yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's super yeah, for cool. sure, mate. And if people are if people are interested in doing that, it's uh you know I, the link is literally seven day paleo reset dot com. I cool. just I made it really easy if people are interested in that. I will stick that in the show notes, folks. If you want to jump on that, I really suggest people do. And it's something it, it's clearly a great product that Rob's got out there. So jump on it. And then as I definitely said, you'll then want to come and jump on the Smith Street Pillow food plan from there. So, mate, I'll, I'll, put sure. a link, I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Mate, before we wrap up, I just want to go through some, some quick questions. Some of them are a little bit fun and, and some of them are a little bit more serious. But let's, let's rattle through these. Um, best book you've read recently? What have you got for us? I'm actually – I'm right now I'm in the middle of reading um, Mike Matthews' book because just like you, um, I'm interviewing so many people so often. I've got books lined up that I'm working on. But um, Mike Matthews wrote this really good book called Bigger, Leaner, Stronger. Right. Um, it's an interesting book uh, about um, – about just like the ins and outs of lifting and nutrition, awesome. but I'm having a baby in two months. So I'm right now reading uh, another book that I'm reading is basically the Bradley method, um, home birthing coach, uh, guidebook. Wow. Uh, so that's the other <laughs> book that I'm working on right now. Um, I'm kind of split focused in that way, and that I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm reading about fitness, but I'm also like getting ready to have a baby. So those oh, are the amazing. those are the books that I'm I'm dove, I've dove, in, dove into in the most recent times. Podcast wise, aside from obviously your podcast and our podcast, what uh, what should people be listening to? What are some of your go to podcasts that you send people over to? Oh man, the list is forever. But uh, I don't listen. So I don't listen to when I'm not listening to fitness podcasts. I like listening to How I Built This, yep. which is uh, which is a phenomenal podcast about uh, people who have built really successful businesses. And you know, for the people that look at someone like you and me and think that we are like we are like way beyond where they they think they can go. Um, you listen to a podcast like this, and those people have created billion dollar companies, and then you you get to see how they did it, and yeah. it's not as complicated. It's they kept it so simple in the beginning, and they just kept building off that simplicity, and it makes you realize, wow, it doesn't. You don't leapfrog to success. You basically just lay one brick at a time. Yeah, and right. that's why I really love that show. How I built this. They should yeah. people yeah. should t check that out. Yeah, people should check that out because I think you can take that stuff and you can apply it into building your body as well. That that's a that's a great show. I need to jump back into that. I was I listened to it a while back, but uh, anyway, mate. Um, if you had thirty minutes to work out, what would you do? If I had just thirty minutes, just thirty oh, minutes would, a day, what would you be doing? I would do. I would do uh, squats, deadlifts. Um, I do, uh, and then I would do all body weight stuff. I would do pull pull ups, push ups, and then I would do some kind of fast five to ten minute hit workout, and that would be my workout every single. You know, if I only got to do that one, that one workout over and yeah, over again, that's basically that what I would do. 30 minutes, you'd yeah. be, uh, you'd be, you'd be in good shape. I guess you've, yeah. mate, the next, next one is biggest goal of 2018. I guess, uh, having a kid on the way is one, is probably the biggest goal of 2018. That's but true. what else is big for you this year, mate? Um, well, you know, we're building up besides, yes, being, a, being a, a good parent, uh, is definitely top of the list, but, yeah. um, you know, one of the things now is is really building out our online community, making it stronger and stronger and stronger. My goal is eventually. I was listening to a podcast episode you guys had on James M Moody. Moody. Was yeah. it Moody? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, that's basically my overall goal is to create a lifestyle that allows me to uh, to to travel if necessary, if I wanted to, not necessarily be you know rooted down to one specific location. So uh, in twenty twenty eighteen, going into twenty nineteen. I'd like to build my business to where I don't have any clients. 
uh, one on one in person or very minimal. And, uh, and I'm making a majority of my money just online. Like I still have personal training clients in Los Angeles, yeah. but I'd like to just, you know, have 95% of my income coming from online. So my wife and I can literally be stay at home parents. That's all ulti- my ultimate goal is to be a stay at home parent. Amazing. Um, That's amazing. Play with my kids, give them as much attention as they want and, uh, as they need and, uh, and have my business be kind of intertwined into my lifestyle um rather than separate from who i am se- separate from what i do absolutely mate if you yeah. if you hadn't moved into the fitness industry what what would you be doing how would you be making a living now if the fitness industry didn't exist where do you think you'd be mm-hmm. making your money well i'd be probably trying to make my money as an actor but yeah. i don't know if i would <laughs> taking, I don't know if I would. taking your shirt off <laughs> next to that fat dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right exactly i think that well it's like you know you can you can be the best actor in the world but unless you unless you're lucky and uh and happen to be in the right place at the right time uh you might not ever make a living at it yeah. so um but i really do enjoy it i think that's one of the reasons why i think you probably enjoy performing as well which is one of the reasons why we do things like this why we host yeah. podcasts and interview people because we like performing yes. and uh, and this gives us a platform. So this is my this is my stage right now, uh, <laughs> and maybe in the next you know in the next few years that cha- that stage will change. Maybe I'll move out of fitness and you know and, and feel like I've helped enough people in that realm and yeah. move on to something else. Uh, and maybe it's performance, but it, I guarantee whatever it is, um, I'm going to be talking a lot while I do. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome, mate. And the, and the last one of these quicker questions. When, because you're super healthy and you're following all of your own advice, you're probably going to live till you're about 80. What will you be doing when you're about 80 years old? Uh, I hope I'm like Jack LaLanne, who in his <laughs> 90s was doing like one arm push ups. Yeah. Um, and, you know, look, it's as long as I'm till until my dying day, as long as I'm physically capable and mentally aware, I'm happy with that. You know, I want to I want to create a lifestyle that is that is joyous, happy. Um, full and surrounded by friends and family. And that is at 80, if I can have that at 80 years old, that's, geez, man, yeah, that'd be, that'd, that'd be, be enough, awesome, I think. It? Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Mate, I do have one more question, but b- b- before I ask that, because I like to finish on that, I just want to thank you so much for your time, Rob. And you've just, I mean, you really do share some, some, some great information. And I just really want to encourage people to hop over to your site, folks. I'll put a link in the show notes, openskyfitness.com. Go and listen to Rob's podcast. If you like our show, you'll definitely like his show. We are, we see things quite similar. That's why this has just been a great show to, 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 to be on here. So thank you for what, for, for what you do, mate. It's, um, it's super good. And, and yeah, hopefully there's more people like you out there. Um, before we wrap it up, mate, if you could bring everything together with one piece mm-hmm. of advice that you leave people with for this show, what would that one single piece of advice be? Uh, and I, I have this hanging on the wall right next to my computer. It's written on a piece of paper that's taped to the wall. Um, <laughs> always, it, it reminds me to, to always remember that the process is the result. Wow. We need to get away from just focusing on the results and being, and being satisfied and happy with the process Amazing. and focusing on the process as the main objective rather than focusing on the result. Right. And this is, this is a thing that I, I when I was in high school, um, I was listening to the Aerosmith song and it had the, the line, life's a journey, not a destination. And it just resonated so strongly with me. I grabbed, I, I, I carved on the back of my remote control for my stereo, life's a journey, not a destination to remind myself of this. And I kept that remote until probably um, when I moved into this house about four years ago, I had that remote and I always remembered that moment of hearing those those words and it just reminds me, just keep my eye, just don't worry about the goal, worry about the intention behind that goal, we'll just focus on the process, and, and, then, and that's where true happiness will be, uh, and it's just the reality of it. Amazing. Rob, you're a champion, very inspirational, mate. I think everyone's going to get so much out of this show, so it's now quarter to seven in the morning in LA, so we wish you an absolutely fantastic day. And uh, I'm sure this is not the last time we'll have you on the show, mate. We'll, you'll have a kid along in two months, and I'm sure in 12 months, a lot will have happened in your business. So hopefully we can get you back on and, and, and reconnect and, and, and see what's going on. 
I would love that, Marcus, and you're definitely invited to come on my show. Uh, the baby is arriving any day now, actually. So okay. in two months, I'll have a two-month-old probably. Uh, but yes, uh, but once we get settled in with that, you're coming on my show. Uh, awesome. we, we'll continue this conversation and the, this, this relationship. I love what you guys are doing at Inner Fight. Uh, you, and you are, yes, you are just as, you know, you, you're, it's a, the attractiveness of the motivation that you provide is what, is what really, uh, brings people to you. So, um, I really dig what you're doing, man, and keep Thank it you. up. Thanks a lot, Rob. Have a fantastic day. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Cheers.